All right, please welcome Maddie Berkey. hand-eye coordination. Okay, let's do it. Hi, I'm Maddie. I am a life coach and a nutritionist and a case study in being human. And I'm here to pivot our relationship with food and to give it the same space and latitude we would a lover. What kind of lover is food to you? I just want you to hold that question. What kind of lover is food to you? Is it a good lover? Are you a good lover? Love and food and sex feel like these things we should know how to do. They should be easy and intuitive and delicious, and if they're not, we think we're doing something wrong. It's so much more complicated than that, and I wanna look at this curious overlap between how we eat and how we love. So let's look at this. What kind of lover is food to you? Is it a one night stand? Is it fast and desperate and means nothing but really means everything? Is it, I didn't think that was gonna be funny. Okay, I like it. Uh, is it a partnership where you sleep in the same bed but are a million miles away? Is it, is it abusive? Does it make you small? Or is it a gorgeous lover who means something but not everything? Is it your soulmate, the peanut butter to your jelly? Always a little messy but always delicious. <laughs> right? I mean, so delicious. Um, when I was 14, I disappeared from my life. I tipped into high school, into the, the fear and the insecurity of that, and I tipped into an eating disorder. My body disappeared. It would be lovely if food were your soulmate, and if love felt instinctual, and maybe it starts that way, but for me, both have been things I expect to feed and to fix all of me. And that is too much for one relationship. Food can't be the only thing that feeds us or fills us up, and neither can love. So one of my favorite mottos is, um, don't be an asshole, <laughs> especially to yourself. Uh, right? Um, and this is really huge with food and a body. And I've also had to learn and relearn that it's not a partner's job to fix me or to make me enough, that that is too much for one relationship. And we get to be in relationship with food. We miss that in trying to get it to fit a formula. And mine, and possibly most women, possibly most people in this room, has been threaded with restraint and withholding and with fitting into something as small as thinness. But food is love. It's how we tell our bodies that they're safe and that we have their back. And so what happens when love is based in restraint? Diets are cock-blocking our ability. <laughs> eh? Yeah, uh, to receive love and pleasure because love and pleasure are indulgent and that's okay, we just haven't trained for that. We've made love and sex just as scary as we've made food and have you jumped into bed lately? That shit is terrifying. <laughs> so why make it scarier by making pleasure feel like cheating? So how do we make food and love and sex easier. We do it through inquiry, through reshaping the question. Instead of, what should I eat? How about, what kind of lover is food to me? What kind of lover do I want it to be? We forget that we are the ones who get to and need to make that decision. And instead of, how can I find love, how about, how can I cultivate a life indulgently rich in love? 
Just like a partner, food can't fix everything. It can't hold the heaviness of that, but it can make this life better. It can make this life sexier. It can make this life more delicious. Thank you.